the Votan, and space travel. Hyvor Arnhard stood upon the bridge of his finest ship, his ironkin brother next to him, as he then looked and nodded and stated simply, And so, brother, we now go. And with that, the order had been given. The fleet of ships were small in number, but, as with everything else the kin did, they had it where it counted. The vessels all locked in their coordinates, triangulated with the Votan, both here and across the entire grid of the Deep Core. Their passage would be uneventful and very specific. It was only when they had travelled past the last hold that there would be any complexity in the process. When they did arrive back in real space, the fleet signalled from ship to ship to confirm this. But it was an operation done out of thoroughness alone, not out of any real concern. And it was as it always had been. For in mere days, the entire fleet came back out of the warp exactly where they had chosen to. Exactly. Not one ship was off course. Not one lost to demonic incursion. Not one held in time, or sent forward or backwards. And so, the fleet then powered towards its destination, and was about to unleash the full wrath of the hold against their enemies. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the factions, faces, and forces of the Warhammer 40k setting. The grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. And don't forget, we have a natural history and mythology channels now. Links in the description, so go have a shifty. Now, let us proceed. And today... We are to deal with the very thing which is at the quintessence, the very center of this new formation, this new faction, the Votan. The Votans are a complex thing, indeed, for they do challenge so much existing wisdom, they do challenge the entire setting, one might say. But for this, let us do what we always do. And so, as usual, let us lean on the new existing wisdom from the first codex for the leagues of Votan to quote the Votan the Votan or ancestor cores are as sacred to the kin as gods are to more spiritual races part oracular fonts of wisdom part gestalt ancient presences and part sentient supercogitators the Votan are the foci for a singular cult of veneration, which is as close as the kin come to religious belief. No league would risk harm to its ancestor core if there was any other path, and no kin nor iron kin would hesitate to lay down their lies in defense of the Votan. By custom, the kin do not speak of the Votan to outsiders. They use their name freely enough, but never explain it content to leave others to believe what they want of the word. The Votan belong to the kin, just as the kin belong to the Votan, and no other peoples have any place in that relationship. In part, this is because superstitious non-kin would be apt to misinterpret their ancestor cause as deities or demons. In truth, the Votan can best be described as ancient machine intelligences so complex and powerful as to be nigh on supernatural. Their self-organized data stacks and quantum info cores hold all the information a race might need to thrive in the depths of space. Weapon specifications, standard template constructs, scientific and philosophical learnings, genealogical data, military and survival theory and strategy. These are just part of the wealth of lore buried within the machine minds of the Votan. So bright do their artificial intellects shine, the kin voidfarers are even able to use them as localized beacons within the warp 
Herein lies the other reason the kin do not speak of the Votan to outsiders. In a dark and ignorant age, few treasures are as precious or dangerous as knowledge. Sadly for the kin, the wisdom of the ancestor cause has become ever harder to access as the millennia have passed. Whoever created these incredible machine minds, it seems unlikely that they were ever meant to continue independent operations for as long as they have. Nor, perhaps, were they equipped to wrestle with the intellectual and moral dilemmas or galactic truths they have been faced with. More and more information, dutifully catalogued and filed away, has filled their mental storehouses to overflowing. Questions posed to the Votan have required them to adapt their own processing subroutines through self-guided evolution and, at times, to request information or mechanical augmentation. Over-association with the true living minds of the kin has led some Votan to develop strange behavioral quirks akin to rudimentary personalities, but all of them have become more ponderous of thought. Questions asked of the Votan may take as much as centuries to receive an answer, which may even then be another question. Information not regularly accessed has vanished into lost data vaults deep within their mental architecture, while vital facts or details have been mired in self-replicating layers of, of data amendments. Day by day, their ancestor cores become more senescent and in some cases, mercurial. The Votan are protected with every technological and strategic art the kin can conceive, including oath bands of Einhar Hearthguards and war engines who stand guard over each ancestor core. Some are buried deep in fortified vaults or encased behind layers of force fields at the heart of impenetrable strongholds. Others are kept on the move, housed aboard the mightiest flagships of their league. For all this, some Votan have fallen to the predation of foes, much to the shame and sorrow of the kin. The Five Hundred Years' War was triggered when the orcs of War Morbok overran the hold of Oriak's Iron Gate kindred and tore apart the ancestor core within. The Great Orion Compact swore the most widespread grudge in recorded history for the death of their Votan, hurling all their might against Morbok's empire of scrap for more than five centuries, until the last orc was slain and the insult was answered. More tragic still is the tale of the Emberg Eignir Bloch, who found themselves in the path of a tendril of High Fleet Leviathan. Consisting of only a handful of kindreds, the Emberg Eignir were forced to stand their ground when the hive ships closed in around the whole world, beneath whose surface resided their Votan. Hopelessly outnumbered, the kin fell to the last in its defense. Yet the bitterest irony was yet to come. The Tyranids ignored the Votan entirely, leaving it buried alone in its pit upon a dead world. The accumulated pain and desolation of those who had fought, died and been returned to the ancestors to keep their bodies from the hungry moors of the swarm flowed into the machine mind of the Votan and drove it insane. The sorrowful tale of the Mad Core is still told amongst the leagues, and all know not to sail by the wavering beacon of its tortured mind. Ironically, the cultural practices of the kin may actually have contributed, however unwittingly, to the Ancestor Core's decline. The Votan have long borne responsibility for regulating the genomic data required to breed each new generation of kin, even as the race has grown exponentially. Perhaps most demanding of all, they have also accepted into themselves the accumulated and often duplicate cerebral data of endless generations of dead kin and iron kin. It seems likely that this custom was once purely practical, part of the same pragmatic routine that saw the bodies of the fallen recycled for nutrients and raw materials. In more recent millennia, however, it has taken on an element of ritual that has seen mountainous drifts of information drown even the hyper-technological mind cores of the Votan. 
or kin desire to rejoin their ancestors upon their deaths, with their bodies and minds are offered up to the Votan in the belief that their experiences will enrich the machine minds and aid future generations. This places great pressure on individual kin to live up to the perceived ideals of their ancestors, driving them on to illuminate dark new corners of space, to witness sights no kin before them has, and to engage in adventure and battle across the vast span of the galaxy. It is a major motivator in Oathman setting out to fight as soldiers of fortune in the wars of other races, for doing so allows them to learn much from their temporary employers, not least the movements of potentially hostile foes and the location of rich caches of resources. They then return to their people more grizzled and wise than ever before. The tradition of returning to the ancestors also provides the kindreds with their greatest means of sentencing transgressors. It is viewed as a waste of resources to incarcerate those kin so aberrant that they would commit cardinal crimes against their own. Murder, extreme wastage, and abject failure have but one possible punishment. That they might no longer burden their family, the culprit is sent into exile from which vanishingly few ever return. At the same time, their name is told to the Votan, so the ancestors know who has failed them and can forbid the transgressor entrance into another kindred or league. To the kin, the true horror of this sentence is neither death nor loneliness, but rather that they will never be permitted to return to the ancestors. Their entire life and all of their experiences are thus rendered meaningless. The kin say of this fate that it would be better never to have drawn breath. The thought of exile is one of the very few that inspires true dread amongst them, and its threat does more to stay the hand of lawbreakers than would any amount of corporal punishment or fire and brimstone dogma. The Interface It is the Grimnir who come closest to speaking to the Votan. To them falls the duty of asking their ancestors for wisdom and guidance, and interpreting the resultant output. This they do within the arcane technological structures called fanes. Every hold has a fane, a space of timeless devices and quiet contemplation, at the heart of which lies a complex tangle of machinery that is part altar, part interface. It is said that once these machines were simply the nodes through which the wisdom of the Votan flashed with the speed of thought from one voidcraft to another. They still fulfill this practical purpose. Culturally, though, fanes have taken on a greater spiritual significance to the kin, so that now they are viewed as places where one can stand in the full regard of the ancestors, and where the presence of the Votan lies heavy and somber. Indeed, through arcane technological processes that even the kin do not understand, there have been instances recorded of fanes miraculously developing artificial intelligence in their own right, and joining the ranks of the Votan themselves. These occurrences of miraculous self-awareness are cause for great honor and celebration amongst the kindred in whose hold they occur. By comparison, though, more than one Votan has degenerated in recent centuries until they have become little more than fanes themselves. To witness such decline is a terrible tragedy to the kin. Alliances such as the Capellan League or the disintegrating Balor Atal conglomerate endure long years of mourning after their ancestor corps suffered this fate. End quote. Now I would also like to discuss one of the most important bonuses of having a Votan at all, but in the strict confines of the method of travel. And so, for the second time this video, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, Daring the Immaterium The kin are able to exploit warp space in a way few other peoples would risk, thanks to their hardened souls and the reliable protection offered by their technologies. Even those kin who carry the psychoactive clone scheme are not literal psychers in the true sense of the word. Like a shuttered lantern whose aperture has been opened a little wider, the souls of these psychoactive kin 
shine just brightly enough to mesh with ward tech, such as ancestral ward staves and crests. These devices come to life at their touch, emitting a soft thrum of power and glimmering with cold witchlight. It is through the careful use of barrier tech devices that the Embir manipulate the energies of the warp to produce manifestations similar to those conjured by true psychers. The kin say that the void is in their veins. By this, they mean that they have been starfarers since their earliest days and consider themselves preemptive in that field. Their void craft tend towards enormous size and redoubtable build, with even smaller vessels such as the Bastion or Stronghold-class mining vessels matching most races' cruisers for armoured bulk, shielding and firepower. When navigating real space, they employ electromagnetic scoops to power hydrogen ramjets that, while not the swiftest means of propulsion, are typically arranged in such clever profusion as to render kin void ships balletic, despite their huge size. When it comes to warp travel, the kin are equally steady in their approach. They use warp drives and Geller ramparts, a superior design and reliability to anything humanity understands. Each craft is commanded by a void master, a captain skilled in every aspect of spacefaring and often augmentically enhanced to aid them in their duties. Each is supported by ironkin wayfinders, whose accelerated logic cores enable them to cogitate probable paths through the madness of warp space without risking psychic interaction. With support from their bridge crews, these specialists guide their craft in a series of plunges. These are short, controlled warp jumps, during which the kin may take the time to harvest energistic skeins from within the immaterium, or even board warp-borne space hulks for empiric salvage. Traveling in plunges takes longer than the vast warp jumps made by humanity, or the risky sprints of the tower slipstream module but it ensures that the kin arrive where and when they intended, almost every time. End quote. So we now know what a Votan is. Well, sort of. They are hypercomputers from the dark ages of technology, and their ways of making travel safe are exactly those which have always been noted about the most advanced period of human development. After the long march ships, which took years to get to their destinations, humanity developed warp beacons that permitted us to travel the warp exactly as the leagues do even now. Hence, with a Votan, I feel at least not a leagues and cloned thing only. In the Votan, we see the last relics of the age of technology, and they have many an STC template, but they cannot be full STCs in my mind. But why, O oh bald one, why do you say this? Well, it's simple, really. That they must have been earlier forms of STC. First or early batches, so to put it. For we know that the last STCs, or standard template constructors, had the collected sum and total of all human knowledge contained therein. And if the kin had these STCs, real and fully operational ones, then they too would be able to create weaponry ten times more powerful than anything they now have. Even they, with the most advanced weaponry in the galaxy, even matching the Eldar and Necrons. Even the Kin cannot perform the wonders and horrors possible of humanity in its heyday. For once upon a time, humanity could displace ships and matter so it overlapped in real space, and exploded with a force that cannot even be guessed at now. And they could travel through time. They were truly the masters of real space, as much as the Eldar are of Warpcraft. So, the Votan are, in my mind at least, the very early templates of the STCs to follow. And in truth, the moment, the very second that the adepts of Mars find this out, that very instant, then the entire force of the Adeptus Mechanicus will attack the kin on a scale that they have never witnessed before. And the truth again of the matter, the Imperium will have no choice but to support the Adeptus Mechanicus. 
so gentle listener, it merely takes one barbaric inquisitor to torture a kin. One psyker worth his salt to deep scan even one of them. And then the core will burn with the fires of the largest imperial crusade since the Indomitus, if not the Great Crusade. So, good luck to the kin. They are most definitely going to need it. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. A swift reminder about our other channels. Links in the description. Thank you for your precious time. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.